Herb PMO and, and particularly healthcare focused uh, webinar we have today. Um, and thank you all for uh, attending. This session will be recorded and we'll be able to share that uh, immediately um, after we have all of the uh, video compiled to be resourced later. And we'll also share that in some other locations. Uh, first and foremost, again, thank you. Um, my name is Jeremy Knudsen. I just thought that while some people might chuckle with what I'm wearing here today, I thought it was definitely appropriate. Um, Happy holidays. Uh, looking forward to having a great webinar with everybody here. Uh, looking forward to as well hearing from you folks also as we go through this uh, webinar session today. We have this block for 90 minutes, but through the course of this, if we are able to cut short and you have uh, questions and answers uh, and also anything you wanna collaborate on with us as we walk through some of the, the series of topics that we have today, please, please feel free to Raise your hand in the chat window um, and also feel free to come off of mute. Uh, we have panelists being monitored here. And there's also the chat station here. So if you keep the chat window up as well, make sure you select two panelists and attendees and that will allow you to uh, uh, come off of mute or as well ask questions and direct us as needs be. But uh, again, my name is Jeremy Knudsen. I focus uh, on the healthcare. Uh, side for service now on the IT transformation, uh, which is also inclusive of things such as uh, business management or enterprise portfolio management. And I'm also joined here with my colleague and dear friend, Steve Norton. So Steve, do you mind uh, saying hello to the, to the group? So hi, again, my name's Steve Norton. I'm a solution consultant focusing on the um, healthcare sector for the country. I focus on everything that's included in our IT business management suite of projects. So that was project portfolio management, resource management, agile, scale, agile, things along that line. I work closely with Jeremy. So nice to meet all of you. Great, great. Thank you, Steve. Uh, and I appreciate that. I'm going to ask you, Steve, just as I transition over to our next slide here, I'm going to come back to this housekeeping tips is that, you know, you have been muted to minimize the background. Um, also, there is the Q&A feature or the chat feature, either one, feel free to, to jump on that. We have folks here that can help monitor. Um, and also make sure you choose the panelist and attendees piece. Um, you can take a break whenever if you need to. This will also be recorded. So we look forward to your collaboration and feedback across the course of this. And Steve and I have worked over the last couple of, of weeks just really making sure we, we streamline the topics and, and the conversation that him and I often have, working with a number of customers uh, and, and also healthcare agencies and healthcare departments that are out there and really seeing some of the agendas that, that are often coming up from an enterprise project, enterprise portfolio management perspective. We wanted to cover these topics. We'll make sure that we, we leave you as well with some of the other assets that we've got that really dive into individual pockets based on either your level of maturity and where you are, but also this is your time today. So we know that out of your busy schedules that oftentimes the Zooms or the go to meetings or the WebExes of the world are back to back. And so please feel free to collaborate with us on this today. Um, we grow by learning from you. And some of the agenda items and topics we're gonna, we're gonna make sure we cover today is what we hear, keeping on top of initiatives, dashboards, you know, reports. Think about the automation of just a simple project or a strategic alignment report across multiple business units in, inside the organization. Um, some things around continuous planning. So the advent of you know, agile, well, we don't do agile, but continuous planning and unplanned events that happen, which I think we're all very well aware, occur almost frequently, if not one big one that's happened this year. Investing, investing into uh, areas that are insights into the funding, how funds are allocated, is it capital, is it operating? How do we shift decisions quickly based on where project status or portfolio status is performing? And then also what resources and capacity does that actually have on our organization itself as well. And then we'll touch as well on some project execution, waterfall, hybrid and agile. Um, I do wanna say thank you all for again joining. And just as a, another brief housekeeping item, um, the safe harbor notice here is basically that there will be some forward looking statements. We intend to share with you some things that are coming in a future release as well um, of ServiceNow uh, on the business management side. Uh, so please don't make any investment decisions um, or any of those uh, decisions from the safe harbor uh, that I'm putting forth here. So as we start to dive in with the time we've got here today, first and foremost, I want to I want to begin really around the ServiceNow platform in and of itself. 
to me, the platform is the orchestration and automation of work. The enterprise portfolio management aspect of where it fits into the ServiceNow platform engages in so many other different layers outside of just a traditional IT workflow. It engages in employee workflows. It engages in customer workflows. It also engages in all of the other systems, all of the other ways that supply chain from a centric view of being able to lease new spots for a vaccination distribution. Uh, if we start to look at other areas that the enterprise portfolio management aspect of the ServiceNow platform operates, it really starts to bear witness to workflow, uh, automation, automation of change, unplanned change. And so being able to orchestrate a lot of that work occurs by nascent on the platform itself. So when you hear us more or less from a vernacular alignment, I like to start with the platform because it really enables us to streamline and centralize a lot of components. As a good friend and colleague of mine often says, um, automate yourself out of the stuff that you don't like doing today. And if there's an area where we can assist in that, and hopefully we'll touch on a few of those here today with you, um, that will be the key. Now, a, a handful of you have probably worked with me previously, and you know that this is, uh, at, having been here with this practice of business management for over the last three years and doing it for 15 years, uh, there's one resonant comment that I think really rings true as soon as I have, I, I start this conversation. Is that, and without reading it, I'll tell you what it means to me. Please read it yourselves if you like. But what this means to me is, is the art of saying not right now or, or no. Uh, it also means that strategy is actually one of those driving factors. To me, from an enterprise portfolio management perspective, it is really the alignment of all of the strategy across the enterprise that needs to be critical. And it's critical not only just in healthcare, but it's critical in, in every organization uh, that we see today. And so the execution side of that is really the day-to-day the -day work and the execution has now changed dramatically as well. And a couple of examples that are sh I'll share with you that I wanted to bring forth that we've recently shared with other large healthcare providers uh, across the US are some of these um, thoughts and researches that have come from McKinsey and Company. So this is a report and when you get the slides as well as watching the recording, you can see that this comes from a McKinsey report on how COVID has pushed companies over the technology tipping point and transformed the business forever. I would say that is predominantly very true, not only just in healthcare, but everywhere. And what this is really telling us in this research is that pre-crisis, we look at these, uh, you know, the adoption and the customer interactions that are digital. Now, digital isn't necessarily an IT-centric term here. Digital is what did the crisis force us to do? It forced us to work in ways that are different. Steve, you and I had this conversation yesterday uh, when we were just going through this. And, and you know, we used to mention on that execution and strategy slide that things change and that the things change by saying, hey, Steve, can you spin up a project for me? Just that knock on the door is now a remote knock. It's a Slack message. It's a text message. It's more email. So you start to think of the interactions that are occurring, coming back to that platform story, that are now digital has accelerated tremendously. So the automation of that to centralize and get visibility into a portfolio becomes really the digital imperative or for some of the phrasing that's out there, uh, digital transformation. It's been going on for years. This just has been accelerated by the fact of, are we actually having centralized view into actions, tasks, targets, and areas where our individuals are working? Do they have the resource capacity to be able to execute? Steve, uh, any thoughts on this as we had the conversation yesterday? So as Jeremy mentioned, being having workers be remote, the hallway conversations, the knock on the doors no longer happen. You need to be able to have a way to solicit new ideas, suggestions, handle project requests, bring them in, and then to communicate the information back out to a diverse and remote organization, uh, remote teams, etc. The ability to go in, download data, run it through Excel pivot charts, et cetera, and then have meetings in rooms sharing the data and talking about it in conversations. 
that's become more difficult. And having a common platform, a central repository where all of your information sits that people can see, you can make decisions on, everybody sees the same thing real time is becoming more and more important. And hopefully we'll be able to show you how we can facilitate that sharing of data, that real time information to help you make better decisions. Yeah, thanks, Steve. And, you know, feel free to use the chat or the Q&A or raise your hand if you have comments, if this resonates with you. I mean, likely, in, we, we see this in healthcare. Steve and I speak healthcare every single day. We have, uh, we hear about vaccination distribution locations. And I, every time I hear about some part of not only the COVID crisis, but the business as usual, the run the business side from a Gartner Center term, <clears throat> excuse me, is, is critical to understand we still have to keep the lights on, but we have to be able to respond and react correctly. And sometimes that's investment in other areas that can also bring efficiency and gains. How do we make those decisions? Um, that's kind of the passion. If you hear the passion coming out, it's just this is something that I think is ripe with. If, you, if you're in an IT-centric mode, it's plan, build, deliver, and operate from an ITIL-based practice. Um, the first part of that phrase is plan. How are you planning the distribution of um, an internet line that needs to be plugged in to a VPN firewall to make sure that PHI data is secure, that storage containers sitting in a parking lot that have internet of, of things, devices, monitoring, temperature and cooling. How does all of that orchestrate together? And how do you know that it's all arriving on time? Those are microcosms of not only projects, but projects that fit to higher levels of strategy. And the reason I mentioned some of those constructs there is because in, in part of this McKinsey study is that <clears throat> some of the experimentation with all of the investment in newer digital technologies are spanning the enterprise. These aren't necessarily IT centric components, but IT is sometimes at the forefront of helping deliver and execute on those. So helping navigate through the, uh, that, that digital technology and how it's played a key role is that these respondents here were saying, um, that they were the first in their industries to experiment with new technologies during crisis because they had some level of improvement on the way that they were able to monitor and manage and track and look at the efficiencies gained. Or some of them on the other side of the coin were investing more than industry peers in digital related capital expenditures. How did they make those decisions? Those that often I would call in this, not in a bad way, but as a laggard are while we're still having our own legacy systems, we're seeing, Steve and I, that it's not a replacement of those legacy systems. There's technical debt in some of those ways to achieve that from an enterprise perspective, but they all fit cross overlap into every other individual portfolio. I'm hoping some of this resonates with, with some of the areas that we've seen because you, you heard me talk a little bit about digital transformation and how it's accelerated by COVID. Well, it's actually, taking it into other different microcosms. Digital transformation is accelerating agile practices. Um, we often hear, and Steve, I'll have you chime in here in a moment of, well, we don't do agile. But what we end up finding out is that you actually, in most organizations do agile. It's just not following a traditional, like a, a waterfall approach, which is by PMBOK or PMI-based principles. Um, so when you think about enterprise strategy, we are hearing more and more from our customers saying, we have got to be agile. Some of the, the areas I just mentioned previously is so that you can respond to things quickly while you still have your large waterfall projects, your capital projects that are still going on, and you might have agile blended into those. The, the way I attribute that is think of, the, think of the Titanic, for a lack of better phrasing. The Titanic is headed towards an iceberg. Well, if I was able to deploy multiple little uh, tugboats off the side of the Titanic, those are agile. Titanic is your waterfall sometimes, and they can be fast and inefficient, but I also need to be agile. I need to quickly, quickly pivot that ship. So you can deploy individual pods, tugboats, to do releases, to actually move it faster, and then bring them back. So having that, that's a hybrid model. That is something that, you know, looking back at history, probably a horrible example, but, you know, might resonate well. Um, but the transition to enterprise agility, again, in these studies is that it's had a 78% year over year growth. More and more, we are hearing about the ability to um, integrate not only against on the platform, the agile based solutions, but how agile blends into the enterprise portfolio strategy. So that shifting 
of not only just spend and strategic spend and investment becomes really critical to shift people, time and resources, because the bottom line is your resources are your largest expense. And so it's expanding that. That's what's, it's beyond just IT. Traditional for, uh, thought is uh, agile is an IT centric term. Agile is a way of operating and delivering. And therefore um, PPM leaders, 33% of them who report to an EPMO are now looking at expanding that not only just from IT, but to the enterprise. What is often coined as the, <clears throat> the product the product factory or product-based outcomes. So delivering better patient care through um, a, a portal that allows them to interact with their loved ones if for some reason they have to be um, in an area where they have to be isolated. Maybe that's an iPad. There's a component of supply chain. There's a component of patient experience. There's also a component of really IT and some digital uh, aspect of that that spans the enterprise. So supporting the new normal, there is going to be a, tr a tremendous amount of, of funds and investments that actually support the shifting of strategy and spend in that new normal. And that new normal starts to, to really kind of layer up into the, these areas of strategy and alignment. So I'm going to coin this really quick and talk through it because IT business management, ITBM inside of ServiceNow is a product centric, it's, it's, it's a product of what we call it from a simple licensing perspective. But to me, I call it business management, strategic portfolio management or enterprise portfolio management because it is birthed from a lot of the IT centric views, but it is enabling enterprise agility. Steve and I have recently worked with a, a handful of customers and some of their projects are doing marketing based activities for hand sanitization units with um, placards that sit behind the hand sanitizers, allowing them to know where to go for resources, who to contact, notifications, that the deployment and the project of that is a marketing driven project that's supporting better patient outcomes, better folks walking into the door of the hospital, and just simply a hand sanitization unit that is placed somewhere. Those are somewhat digital transformation, but their customer experience, their service based experience, and it's spanning across the enterprise. And so as we walk through this webinar today, the strategy, the alignment and the execution are really all of that enterprise portfolio management, again, construct that organizations have um, typically strategies, investments, goals, uh, OKRs, I often hear across our customers as well, um, that have to be aligned. Are we aligning our strategies to our portfolios, our programs, our projects? Are we delivering as an organization a product for an enterprise-based initiative? Um, does an application um, support that? Does a new investment somewhere support that? How do those orchestrate together? And then the execution then becomes the, the teams, the people who are doing the work, the individuals. And often we'll hear, Steve, and I'll you know, again have you chime in. I'm sorry I didn't on the last piece, but we, we hear folks mentioning, well, we like our tools. That's the reason the platform piece came in as well. The integration of where folks are working becomes critical, but also thinking of the automation of all of that being orchestrated into one location to look at a holistic visibility from an enterprise level that is aligned to strategy. Um, so Steve, I mean, anything to add on, you know, we like just because a tool is there doesn't mean it's necessarily a rip and replace like a JIRA as an example. Um, orchestrate your stories, orchestrate those the folks that love those tools and they're very good at that. Let them work in those tools, but use the integrations that we have to orchestrate to an enterprise level to be able to do what they love, but deliver value and work in still one visible location. Steve. Yeah. So a lot of our customers, the people that I talk with, they say, well, we have some groups that are becoming more agile and functioning more agile, but we really aren't because we have a large number of waterfall projects, et cetera. And we don't have a good way to track, to prioritize, track, execute, and report on both models. They are done in different areas. Quite often are we have people doing agile work, both development and some project level type work in JIRA. It doesn't work the best, but that's where they're working it. Whereas we're more traditional waterfall focused. We're doing our stuff in ServiceNow or in Microsoft Project or Project Online or some other tool. What we bring to the table is the ability to execute in these different models and be able to get visibility into what's going on, no matter how you're working on it. And again, if you have 
people that are maybe doing some work in JIRA and teams that are working in a JIRA, Azure DevOps, et cetera, we can integrate them so that you have the information in a common platform, the kind of the quote, single pane of glass and what's going on, how are we delivering value that is aligned to our different strategies and goals and objectives. And so we don't have to switch between different tools, uh, switch different systems, integrate data to build out report to stakeholders and management. So having the ability to, ability to bring all that data into a single platform is really powerful. Thanks, Steve. Any questions before I move on? And we, we're, we're not going to PowerPoint you uh, uh, to, to, to the, let the cows come home, I guess I'll say here today. Um, we'll, we'll get right to some, some great stuff in product that we've put together for you. But any thoughts or questions, any, anything that's resonating? And if this isn't resonating, please let us know. We're happy to pivot and shift uh, something in the future as well if you'd like to see something different. So All right, one second there. Uh, it's the joys of being at home. I had a small visitor come into my office and I had to hit mute quickly. So one second here. And I think it gave us some times here. Um, so, and we'll, we'll be able to answer some of those questions as we, we go forth. Thanks, you, thanks, Patricia. I appreciate you, you chiming in. Uh, you, you, you started us off great. So please feel free to chat Q&A or raise your hand. Uh, that's what we're here for. Let's tie this back to that strategy goals and alignment piece again. Um, when we look at strategies, goals, and alignment, you know, they could be, and I put in just a few handful samples here. They could be, um, hey, uh, elective processes as at the top, you know, elective surgeries are down as an example. Steve, this is a great one you brought up with me. Well, maybe some of those rooms aren't being used. It could be a time for a project from the enterprise uh, perspective to do some sort of a refresh um, that, you know, some of those capital expenditures are being uh, put toward. Or employee support could be, um, uh, tracing or contact applications or onboard and hiring contractors, some of those strategies to improve patient experience or even some of those strategies are right now reduce cost. Um, how do you centralize all of those? And sometimes they overlap tremendously with one another. So again, Gartner-centric terms are, you know, run, grow, transform. Uh, centralizing those demands, looking at decreasing run cost or reducing cost as an example, or increase transform. <clears throat> Maybe uh, going to a thin, thin book desktop as a service or a thin client as a service for a better patient care for, for remote workers could be something that's coming in from increased transformation. Now, this funnel here on the left can come from a varying different uh, view. It could come in from ideas that folks have internally of your organization, or it can come externally. Customer service engagement, right? So the, the typical chat agent you might see if you shop at a, a pottery barn, as an example, and you want help and you have a chat agent. These ideas can also come from your customers to actually bring in what are they looking for that could be aligned to your strategy so you can actually shift and change where those investments um, need to be more appropriately applied so that you're actually getting not only the voice of the customer, you're getting the voice of the employee and everyone is aligning to the same work strategy that will help deliver on the, attention, the intended outcome. And what that becomes is the way you execute that work as well. You'll see a touch of that here today, but to execute that work, um, waterfall, agile, scaled agile, uh, which is you know, the product-based outcome approach, um, supporting all of those in one lens and purview is really critical. And then there's that hybrid component. I'd say right now, Steve, you know, what we hear is 70 to maybe 80% of the folks are really thirsting for that hybrid environment. Waterfall's not going away. We support the waterfall approach, but they do want to put agile based approaches as well into that environment. So hybrid or uh, wagile or whatever you would like to call it uh, by, by trade term is what we're often um, hearing. Now, delivering on those is once you're executing, you need to actually monitor track, going back to the reporting piece I'd mentioned earlier, delivering measurable outcomes uh, uh, at speed, having real time, near real time based data that isn't I'm going to spend four hours if Jeremy is a project manager or reporting into the EPMO, 
what I'm doing is I'm, I'm trying to say the EPMO needs to hate, make strategic decisions. Um, my project status report takes me four hours every Friday to update. And by the time it's actually open and read by Monday, it is probably out of date. Costs need to be updated, tasks, deliverables, key milestones. It's not that it's, are you doing a good job or a bad job? It also helps the enterprise align to that strategy of the tasks and the work that is being done to make the shifts into the proper areas and focus from a portfolio perspective, which really lends us into some of the analytics and the dashboards. And again, to answer the question that came up here, you'll see what we call performance analytics, which is the reporting, you reporting directly inside of the ServiceNow solution, exported out, very common questions we get. Again, why I started with platform. Can you ingest Microsoft project data? Yeah, we absolutely can. Can you integrate with Jira? Yes, we can. There's really not much we can't do, but it's also, well, I want to extract all this data back out and I want to go put it all back into a PowerPoint again. My question would be why? Because that data is there for executives and um, not only executives, but the EPMO to also be able to look at that more in near real time and everybody working in the same solution. That's a value, that's a value component. And then there are ways to bring that data back out and report even better. Uh, you'll see some of that in the reporting and analytics that we do here across the ServiceNow platform in general. But one of the pieces is the review of those dashboards, right? So keeping on top of those st strategies, the initiatives um, and reviewing what those dashboards are from an EPMO perspective. Um, I'm gonna have Steve go ahead and, and walk through a handful of those, those use cases here with us. So Steve, on to you if you wanna grab the ball. Okay, so from the EPMO's perspective, you want to know what's going on with the context of your projects, your demands, knowing what your pipeline or backlog looks like, and, and also how are we executing on the strategies of the organization and what, what are the status of things and do we need to make any changes to it. So within ServiceNow, we have the ability to take the data real time and look at it, to slice, dice, report the information up in a variety of ways within here. Uh, we have, you can build a wide variety of graphs, charts, uh, reporting styles, include them in dashboards, on reports that get emailed out, et cetera, um, with the ability to drill down and drill into it. This particular dashboard has some different types of components on it. I have as with any environment in service now, if I don't like donut charts, I don't think this is either uh, the way I want it to present, I can go in here and edit the content, make changes to the graph, or even just say, I don't, this is not important to me. I can go ahead and eliminate this. Um, these types of graphs are current as of when the page loads, whereas these types of graph, these are time series. So for the time series, we take snapshots on a daily basis and then plot that information over the course of time. So I can drill into any one of these and see how the number of active projects have changed over time. And I can even drill down and say, okay, how many of these are waterfall? So we could look at this by execution time or who are we doing the projects for? So we'd be able to look at this data through um, various types of graphs and filters and see trend lines for the various um, departments, execution types, portfolios, et cetera. Now, this project here, this dashboard is filterable. I can look at it across basically the into all portfolios, all projects, everything that we are currently working on. I can also say, I want to look at specific portfolios. You can align projects to programs, programs to portfolios, or projects to portfolios, et cetera. So I could take a look. I may want to just look at the HR portfolio. What are we doing within the context of the HR portfolio? So when I set these filters, all the data in all the different tabs gets filtered based on portfolio. I also may be a portfolio manager. I just want to see my portfolio. So these are the listing of the portfolio managers and I'm logged in as Megan. I just wanna see my portfolios. So I may have one or two portfolios I manage. I want to be able to see it. I can also look at this by organizational. I may wanna look at clinical or labs or patient care or different port, um, business units that we're doing the work for or program. I wanna look at a specific program or 
a program manager that may be running uh, multiple programs, slice and dice and view the data within here. As we talked about pipeline, so this is predominantly what are the active projects, but we also have the pipeline, the submissions, the ideas, the demands that you're building the business case through. So I can look at how long do they sit in the various stages, the uh, conversion rates, how long do we work on them at demands, how has our pipeline of ideas or sub idea submissions changed over the course of time. If we look at our demands, which are our project requests, where we build out the data, the resource plans, the cost plans, the business case for why we're gonna do this, I can see how those have changed. But also, if you notice down here, it says submitted, screening, qualified, approved. I can see how my work has moved through the queue over the course of time. So I can look at any given point in time and say, was well, most of my work in the early stages of the process or late? What, I wanna look at where I'm at now, or what does it look like? So I can look and see what's going on. See, maybe organize it by business unit, see how many have changed, what are the input? I wanna maybe look at this by um, category, state, department, type impact portfolio. So I can slice and dice and see how this data has changed, do some analysis on it within here. I can do the same thing for projects. So I can go through here again, look at projects. Project health is critical. As a portfolio manager within the, or someone within the PML, I'm looking at my portfolio. How is the overall health of my um, investments? So if everything is on time, nothing's late, there's no critical risk, I'll have a 100% healthy portfolio. But as we all know, things become late. There are projects that have red statuses within them or critical issues. So I can see what the trend lines are. These going down, we're getting a more healthy portfolio going up or going down. Overdue projects, projects with key milestones. I can click on this and drill through and see what are those 12 projects with missed milestones or the 28 currently overdue projects, et cetera. We'll have that. A very important thing to being uh, looking at the portfolio and doing strategy, figuring out what you wanna execute on is I need the data to make decisions. Are people entering the data that we need to help make our decisions um, and proper adjustments? So I can look at the data that's being entered in the demands. I can also look at the data being entered in the projects. Are we missing key pieces of data that help drive our decisions and strategy alignment? So for instance, projects without project managers. Six, I'm okay with that. They probably just got created, et cetera. But why do I have any projects without a business case assigned to them? Or no projects with no descriptions? Etc. If we're not doing portfolio or excuse me, programs, maybe I should get rid of that widget because that's not important to me. Or if there's other data um, that you, it's important for you to track, you may be assigned to um, business unit or organizational elements because you need to do tracking reporting, you add this to it. We can also look at actuals. How are we performing and how are we performing over the course of time? So, we have a concept of planned benefits and planned costs, actual benefits, et cetera. So I can look at my plan versus actuals, uh, plan versus actual by different categories within here. I can also look at how much our planned costs versus our actual costs. How are they doing? Are we overspending or underspending historically? So I can look at that from a different perspective. So this is telling me what's going on but there may be other attributes that I wanna go ahead and take a look at. You may want to create a strategy board that these are our top strategies organizationally that we wanna track and focus on and see our, how are we doing. Set up um, expected values. So we have the, our target values and then you can track over the course of time, how are we changing? For instance, like customer service scores, customer uh, satisfaction scores. You can set a target and then see how are we doing against those targets or employees experience through use of surveys. So you may have 
so these are your key strategies. How are we doing? You have projects set up to address each one of these things, and you may want to see how we're doing. So customer um, satisfaction and revenue are doing pretty good, but our employee experience scores are going down. Maybe we want to make some adjustments to this and try getting this score going back in the right direction. So how do we do that? We can take a look at our strategic spend uh, dashboard here that we can look at the strategies and the goals that we've defined and see how are we doing? How many projects are we executing aligned to the major strategies? How is the cost distribution as well as the benefit? So we can go in here, our bottom line seems to be projects aligned to improving our bottom line revenue, et cetera, is about a third of our projects where uh, employee satisfaction is about 30%, but our employee sat numbers were down. So we can see that about a third of our projects are addressing that. Our employee experience is about 20% of our costs and really not much on the benefits. So maybe we want to shift some of the numbers from the bottom line shift some focus maybe out of the bottom line a little bit and put some more on uh, employee satisfaction, employee cost retention, et cetera, because ultimately those will impact this. So I can see what's going on and maybe use this to make some decisions on shifting our priorities. So this is kind of some high level information here. I may also want to take a look at, okay, we talked about our demands and how many demands, but what do those demands, what does our pipeline actually look like? So a dashboard that you could set up might be, it's okay, I'm looking at my demands. So from a, let's say a demand manager's perspective, or I'm a portfolio manager. I wanna see for my portfolio, what do the demands look like? So how, what are the states of them currently? Maybe I wanna stack them by stack by portfolio or investment type, et cetera. I can go through here and change them. Look at it by what is the states? Um, how do the time, they look over timeline? But I may wanna do some deeper analysis. So I may wanna see by, are they associated to particular business apps, by business capacity, et cetera. Um, things by the budget, who wants to going to consume more of my budget dollars? Who are my biggest contributors? And of my pipeline, what type of suspend am I anticipating seeing? Is it going to be tied to labor, hardware, app, um, hardware, capex, opex, etc.? So, what is a little bit more analysis on my intake that allows me to take a look and do some analysis on what is the in my pipeline look like, and get a good handle on what is currently active now. These types of graphs are really good, but there are also people out there who are very visual. So for instance, you can take a look at your demand pipeline. So this is gonna load up a visual task board of all of my demands. And I can look at it by portfolio. So for instance, I may be looking at the digital transformation. I, for some people, this type of a visualization gives them a better idea of what are the stuff in draft or in submitted screening. What are my qualified demands? So I can look at this from different portfolio perspective at modernization, see where things are, get a better handle on what does my pipeline look like? What are those demands in the various states? So we have different types of visualizations, different types of reports to help you understand what is the current state and your pipeline of your strategic demands, which will help you then start planning um, how you might be shifting the, uh, your execution model in the future. Jeremy. Hey, thanks, Steve. And we've got a few more things that we're going to go through here, uh, just quickly. So one of the, one of the key areas that we want to focus on and just kind of come back to, to, to revalidate a little bit of the topics for the webinar today is keeping on top of those key, key initiatives, the reports and the dashboard. Steve showcased that, you know, from a project perspective, there's the execution side, there's the program management side. We touched on the capital and the operating. Yes, I can look at those across the portfolio. 
logical next question that we often get is, does this integrate with uh, a general ledger? Absolutely, it does. That's how you look at those actuals that are coming in. So the other side of this is visibility into project actuals versus budgeted and as well time tracking and expenses. So how do we actually bring all of that together into those we use in analysis and financials that Steve shared is through that, that component. And some of the other pieces that actually kind of take this up a little bit more is another area we'd like to make sure we walk you through um, is review of continuous planning and really working working on what matters. And, and as Steve's going through this, if you have questions, please put them in the, in the chat window or simply raise your hand and uh, we'll go ahead and bring you off mute as well. But Steve, back on to you. So now that you've got a handle on what is out there, what is the state of my current investments, my demands project, what does my pipeline look like? You may see that you want to make that shift to um, supporting your employees and getting the employees to use that numbers up or uh, focusing on um, project related to vaccine distribution and setup, et cetera. So what you can do is we have the ability to look at a portfolio. So you can pick different portfolios and take a look at what is our current plan of execution. So this is our confirmed plan. And over here, you can see we have checks for the projects that we have submitted. And this is the timeline for the projects and when the demands. So I can see what is going on within here. I may just want to say, I wanna just look at, filter this to the 15 selected items. So this will get out, get rid of the things that we did not select that aren't currently planned for execution. I can go ahead and look at this and see what's going on. I may not quite remember what this is, so I can right mouse click, I can open up that demand and look at it, or I can open up a project and see, look at the most recent status report, look at the planning console, see what is being executed and when, or actually open up the demand, uh, the project and look at the business case and understand what's going on behind it. So I can get a lot of information in here. Um, there may be a, I may want to set filters on it, may want to say, this may be, I want to look at a specific business unit or organizational element. So I this because this list over here could be quite long, I can go in here and filter and just really look at the projects or demands that meet a certain filter criteria and understand and look at it. So again, this helps me get a handle on what is going on. But we may want to shift our focus. We're in one of those planning meetings and uh, things have changed. COVID has hit. Okay, we need to adjust. Now we've adjusted. We now need to support remote work. That's done. Now we need to move on to the next adjustment, planning for the new normal, et cetera. So you can set up different scenarios up here. So I can look at it, for instance, if I wanted to focus on a grow the business strategy, and this again, well, I might be tying to projects and demands that are tied to grow the business and have aligned to that. So here I'm picking up a different mix of projects that again have budgets and targets, et cetera, benefit amounts. Um, this is telling me that I have some projects that have actually had some costs and benefits of that I am not selected. So maybe I want to maybe pull those things in or instead of canceling them, put those on hold. So here's a strategy aligned, a possible execution strategy focusing on grow the business. Or we may want to again, focus on bottom line. Our bottom line seem to be doing pretty well. So if these are our top ROI projects, maybe we want to take some of these things off and adjust the portfolio and support the employee experience, support remote work. So this has a different, yet again, a different set of projects, a different set of demands that are set up that have different costs and benefits, et cetera, within here. So through this, I can plan and make adjustments and execute on what matters to this. So this is one possible perspective that one can do with this. So this is focused on a fiscal year within here, a single portfolio for a single fiscal year. We, this interface can also be configured such that you could do the exact same type of analysis. You have your confirmed plan, grow the business, et cetera. 
But from this perspective, I am not looking at a fiscal year. Here, I'm looking at January and a 12 month window. So I'm kind of looking at the same thing, but I may say, you know what, this is December. I want to do a, the next 12 months. So I want to change my starting perspective to December and only look at the things that are kind of starting in, in December going forward. So now I'm looking at December 2020 through November 2021. And these would be the projects that would be in scope or demands that are cut in essence in scope during that time period. I may also want to say, you know what, I want to do a rolling 18 month perspective. I want to look at things, big projects that we have laid out. I want to look at this perspective for an 18 month window over here. So expand this out and maybe make some changes to this. So looking at it from an 18 month perspective, that might change some of my choices within here maybe new projects now have come in because I'm at the end of 2020 and I'm looking out into middle of 2022. So with this type of perspective, I can take a much longer view on what I want to go ahead and look at. So from this, again, you can do different scenarios. You can compare them and make decisions on which ones we want to do. So this is going to have a few more projects selected than this one. This is a few less. This one seems to be even. Deltas on um, benefit amount costs, plan costs, et cetera, from within here. So there's different options available to you to help plan and decide how you want to look at this. Am I looking at a fiscal year or a uh, flexible variable 18 month rolling uh, window perspective on your planning? So Jeremy, yeah. back to you. Steve, I, <clears throat> I think that's critical. Just a quick conversation on this as I grab the ball back, because as we start to look at the, the precursor to the webinar, when we talked about unplanned change and continuous um, uh, plans and, and changes that are occurring, what we've often found in that very same view, um, and thank you for the question on that as well. Uh, I think it was you um, uh, that popped in on the Q&A that was a ServiceNow store release. <clears throat> so we're gonna get through a couple of more things that we'll show and highlight with you here, but the ServiceNow store release was scenario planning, um, which came uh, in the ServiceNow store. And then it's also, this is the second version that Steve is showing. So we're able to iterate really a lot with the way the product is going to market. We're able to iterate and release major releases, but as well through store releases. But one of the interesting pieces is that resources also tie directly into those scenarios. The resources are the cost, and then they flow up to the portfolio. And from an enterprise portfolio perspective, as Steve was showing, you can look at the overlap across maybe multiple projects, demands, and things that are coming in that are all still in different strategies and alignment. And you can align those scenarios to look at the cost, the benefit, the resource, and the utilization of those resources and select, so to say, those best scenarios. The way that we've often heard this is that it is articulated with one of our other healthcare providers that, that Steve and I work with here is that they use this every Friday from an executive board meeting uh, perspective. No more the PowerPoints going out. Everybody brings up that screen uh, right with the executives as well as the enterprise uh, portfolio and project teams. And they look at this from a prune the tree perspective. <clears throat> it keeps everyone somewhat on the same page, on the same target and aligned to the same strategies and goals. And you can imagine the speed of which the, that not only just iterative, but that, that continuous planning approach is supported by leveraging that process. So replanning portfolios to look at new demands coming in, because heaven forbid, something that is unexpected happened that affects the, entire, um, uh, the entirety of the organization, much less the entirety of a population. So being able to assess that impact on portfolios from an enterprise perspective is really critical and one of the large driving factors, again, to the earlier uh, precursors I mentioned for um, interactions, digital-based interactions as well. That lends us to an, another quick area that we had as topics, and that's, okay, well, we have investments. How do I have in, in, in insights into the investments in the funding, and are these areas um, prioritized? How do I group and map and, and analyze that data uh, from an investment portal perspective, but also, again, looking at the workforce efforts on those strategic uh, investment um, sides. And before I move on, and Steve, as you grab the ball here, 
folks, great to have you put questions and stuff up there in the chat as well, and we'll post those. So feel free to uh, keep keep the conversation collaborative and live. So what I have up here is something we call investment portal. And from our perspective, demands and projects, et cetera, are your investments. I can build views in here that have give me different perspective, different angles into my investments. In essence, I can say, I want to look at just demands that fit a certain criteria, just projects or both that meet a certain criteria, or I want to look at a specific portfolio or program. So I can build data, build views into my data that is important to me. So for instance, I may want to look and track red projects. This number will, rise and fall depending on the status of projects. I may want to look and keep track of my large budget projects. So for instance, anything over $500,000, or I own the HR portfolio, or I'm in HR, and I want to see how, what is the status, what is going on with my requests, my projects into the EPMO. So I want to see where things are at within here. I can also look at it, say, for for instance, an IT portfolio. This one has our most data in it. I can look at this and I can see that I have 83 investments, the number of demands and projects. What is my costs, my status on my, the projects, and more data in here. I can also adjust this. So my perspective is those two are a little redundant. So I'm going to get rid of those two little widgets, personalize this. Now I have this big massive list of data. I want to be able to organize, slice, and dice this in meaningful ways to me so I can get better value out of it. So I may say, okay, I have two portfolios in here. Let's look at them. I'm maybe aligned to one or more strategies. So I want to, going back to that strategy concept, what are our strategies? I want to see, are they demands or are they projects? What type? And then what is the state of said work? So now I've got kind of organized this to help me get some meaningful data out of here. I can see the total plan cost and the plan benefit for these two portfolios. So costs and benefits, et cetera. I can open this one up and these are the strategies. The growth of the business is going to uh, cost 11.1 and return 25.2. So that's really cool. I can open this up and see I've got 11 projects, six demands. These demands are in these states and I can drill down and see what they are. I can look at open the business case or the view of the demand. For the projects, open pending work in progress. For my work in progress, I can see what's going on. I can get the numbers. People see red. Why is this project late? What's going on? When, from here, I can very quickly get access to the project status report. Help me understand what is going on, make decisions read and figure out what has happened, what's going on, and scope change. Hmm, let's go see what that scope change. We really want this project delivered on time. Let's see if we can possibly scale back that scope change or better understand what's going on here so we can make some decision on it. So I can see pending issues, completed, et cetera, what's going on within here. So I have visibility into this. Now, I may say, okay, well, organizationally, how are we going against grow the business? So I can eliminate portfolio as a drill down. Now I'm just looking at it by strategies. Our grow the business went from 17 to 32 investments. I have more projects, more demands. Our demands in multiple states. Remember, I kind of showed early on that the um, demands go from draft to uh submitted to screening to approved, qualified, et cetera. I see my states within here. Again, I can open up my projects. I now have six, five projects in progress. And this is the red one before, but why is this one yellow? Click again, project status report. So this allows me to slice and dice and look at and gather information and report on it. And I can add any column from the demand or project that I wish that is important to me. I can see here, plus I can add any columns as through our, your deployment, you may add new columns 
to your demands records or to your project records. We can pull those things in here. I can add any piece of data into here and help help me slice dice, look at it, report on it, and, and really help drive my decisions from within here. I may also be saying, okay, well, what is the overall timeline for this collection of projects, this overall portfolio? So I can look at this from a high level Gantt chart perspective. Again, demands, projects. In here, the little white dots represent key milestones. I can get a handle on what's going on. I can look at here and see the planning console for this particular project. Get a handle again on what is going on. And for financial perspective, I can look into the finances. Just as I did before with dragging the columns up on the overviews tab, I can bring it up and look at it by extense, expense type, capex and opex cost type and then what is the project associated with this so i can open this up see okay most of my a lot of costs and labor wait a minute somebody's buying some software open that up i can see the project go down here and then i can go in here and view the cost plan and get understand what software were they purchasing i can also see when do they expect the software cost to come in and what was the actual, the plan versus actual. So I can slice and dice and understand my data very a lot better within here versus having to export out to external systems, et cetera. Um, we know that for financial purposes, people love doing Excel. I can take this data out to Excel and do pivot, pivot charts and work my magic within um, Excel. So we can go ahead and dump all this data out from here from the finances, as well as dump it out from here. So I could again, take all of this data that's displayed in here and dump it out to Excel for pivot charts. I have lots and lots of healthcare companies that use this to run meetings, to understand what is going on within their context of their projects, to make decisions, to do reviews, um, to the CIO saying, okay, I have my critical projects, what is going on with them? So they can use this to view, understand it, ask questions, and even drill in and get understanding of what's going on on their key investments. Jeremy, back to you, sir. And hey, thanks, Steve. And I think that really does uh, parry to the point that I was making earlier on the reports, you know, uh, looking at individual reports that they're right there. They're at the fingertips. Those are automated. So you're actually working again. You're working on what matters. Um, and as we're working on what matters, it quickly shifting funds, which happens, Be, being able to deal with un, you know, uh, unplanned and even planned change events. The, what's the impact to the organization? Focusing the workforce efforts ties quite succinctly into the advent of resources because there you saw a lot of you know, capital and operating can occur in labor. It can occur in assets. It can, can, it can occur in the hand sanitization devices that I was mentioning earlier, they're all a part of an initiative and a strategy. And I think the alignment of that is what is really interesting to look at the prioritization and the way that those, uh, those funding components go. But something that Steve and I um, often, the, one of the first pieces after demand, very large healthcare company here, again, uh, I can't keep the name out there, uh, obviously, but um, going live on very large demand initiatives, actually about three of them where's the best place to start? I know that sometimes those are questions that customers will have, like this looks really good, but we're not there yet, or we're not mature. And trust in us that we, we do know that there's a maturity curve. There is some organizational change components that come in. But when you're talking about the enterprise portfolio side, the strategies, the strategies from a top-down approach that are aligned to the daily work and the activities and the tasks that are done start to magically, in a lot of ways, come together because you're focusing on the right things. It's not just, hey, well, how many other solutions do we have to collaborate together on to get the right report at the right time that is now still data? That's hopefully some of the things that are resonating across what Steve has been sharing with you. But a, a near and dear uh, piece to, to, to my heart is, as well is the resource and capacity planning. What are people working on? Um, working on what matters. Uh, and, and sometimes you might have, there's constructs of resource plans. Uh, well, we can dive into these as a parking lot item with each of you individually as you'd like, but there's the keep the lights on, the daily activities that you do, and then there's also the strategic things that you do. Um, individuals may have 50-50, 60-40 of where their time is being spent. 
very important to have visibility into that. So when you're requesting resources to do in strategic initiatives and activities that the job can be executed and done. And that's a piece that I, I think Steve's gonna show here shortly and just a few more pieces we have left to show and then we'll wrap up and please keep the, uh, um, the, the information and questions coming. Thank you. Go ahead, Steve. So going back to your, back to our scenario planning or strategy, not only do you need to be aware of the costs, the states, the alignment to strategies and goals, you also have the ability to look at the resources. So if we are going to look at the resources consumed by this particular set of projects. These are the resources and the resource availability. If I look at our current plan and the resources, you'll see that this number grows because there's more projects and a wider variety of resources needed for these particular projects. Now, you can say I can look at all groups. I can just focus this on the critically overworked group. Again, go back here. I may say, okay, what, what projects, we may be looking at this row here, what are the projects that are con being in consuming or have resource plans that align to this particular resource overutilization? So that's tagging for this particular project. Now there's most likely we can go look at drilling further and see what are the other portfolios or maybe the um, operational resource plans that are consuming half or more of this, but this particular project is gonna consume that one. If I go up here, look at this 204%. These two projects are requesting time and that are contributing to this over need, over work here. Same thing up on, if we switch to support remote work, again, maybe different sets of numbers. We may be concerned with this 120%. Again, still this DevOps project here or down here, who's consuming this one. So with this, we can take a look at understanding what projects and demands are contributing to the resource plans within here. And if we go back to the timeline view perspective, again, I can see what are my over allocated groups. This has four, this one has also the same four, probably the same project groups, et cetera. So this allows me when I'm making these decisions to understand what is going on. Now, from these graphs, I can see that my architects and my analysts at times are overworked. Well, what are they working on? I can then go ahead and take a look at a report. So here I'm looking at the resource allocations on a weekly basis for my architects. And I can see that these are my architects. People have capacity. They work 40 hours a week. They seem to have been um, allocated 45. So we, for this group, 240 hours availability, 275 hours worth of allocation. So these guys are overbooked. And I can see through the course of time, are they under or over allocated? Like right here, this group is heavily over allocated in this particular uh, time period. I can drill in to see what are they working on? So what, where have the allocations come from? And I can look and understand what are people working on? What are the timelines, et cetera? Maybe we see that a particular project seems to be over consuming resources. Let's drill into that and look at those resource plans and do they actually need three FTEs? Oh, and when they're only reporting about three quarters of one. No, 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 I'm sorry. We don't really need that much capacity. Well, great, make changes to it and release it so we have better availability and visibility into what people are actually needing so we can do better planning for the future. So there's lots of resource reports, both at the project level, at the group <laughs> level, the individual levels within here. Jeremy. Hey, thanks, Steve, appreciate that. Um, and just to really wrap up again, where, where Steve just tied off is that um, you can see where your teams are allocated, obviously. You're able to tie that to time. Um, you can understand how partners and vendors and contractors are also may or may not be required for future projects or future work efforts. Um, support home worker rollouts and allocations, right? Um, allowing not only time, uh, you know, P times Q, uh, right? Re requiring that as well, or not even requiring it, automating some of those processes for remote working. 
um, is something that we've seen as a, a, a risen and emergent trend as well in, this, in the resource and capacity piece. And we have one more individual uh, area that we'd like to um, to share with you all. And I think that that piece is going to be really just the basic of project execution. And we'll probably just take about maybe five or six minutes on this. We can dive in just a bit deeper on it. But one thing that's near and dear to our hearts, we often ask and we see is, um, and Steve, I think you're going to walk through this, is like Epic or Cerner or some of these larger systems that have their own processes that expand enterprise wide. So we felt that this would be a worthwhile uh, a piece to showcase from a templatized perspective of just the pure project execution. And then we'll wrap and, and uh, leave with some questions here towards the end. And uh, Steve, on to you, my friend. Okay. So what we have here is a view of current projects within for assigned to a particular project manager. And you can see hopefully that you, which ones are green, which ones are red, which ones are yellow. You can also set different attributes visible on here for these three fields are configurable. So you can say, I maybe I want to show the um, status or the phase or the type percent completes, etc. And what I have it set up is to show that we can support agile projects, hybrid projects, and pure waterfall projects. Now this one here is an epic upgrade. Epic upgrades or a Cerner upgrades are large undertakings and you do them repeatedly and you want to be able to build out a template that allows you to rinse and repeat, keep applying templates. Oh, maybe you refine the project execution. You build a better example of doing an upgrade or a delivery of something. You can take that project and turn it into a project template. These templates can be simple or they can be exceedingly complex with predecessor, successor, milestones, quality gates within here. This particular project plan um, is like, I think 470 lines long within here. You can do assignments, et cetera, and really truly manage a major epic rollout or major epic upgrade within here. So you can build and manage waterfall or agile projects within here. The one I want to kind of walk you through a little bit is showing how you can build out and deliver on hybrid projects. So as a project manager, or I may want to come in here and understand what is going on. What are any risk issues, actions, or project change requests that are occurring and that I need to get a handle on? Percent complete, how much of my overall, I'm 16%, but I'm 80% of the way, almost 90% of the way through my allocated project time period. Tasks, task assignments, what is overdue? I need to get on these things. What do I need to assign within here? Who's doing what work? I have requested resource plans. I've got one that I haven't been allocated yet, but my other ones have been given. How am I doing on costs, plan costs versus actual costs, budgets? And if you're doing time reporting, what is going on within them? So as a project manager, this is kind of my one-stop place to get a good understanding of what's going on in the context of my project. Again, I can go over to my planning console and get a lot of good information out of here. I, get, I have a waterfall project and aspects of it uh, with my initiation phase. I'm setting up what I'm going to do, people assignments, they're closed. They've reported time against this, planning, quality gates going through here. But down here, I also see that I have an agile phase where I'm delivering on stories. I'm building out a new higher survey system within here. Well, great, that's cool. But during the delivering phase, I have it linked to an external project here that their production environment, the hardware needs to be ready before I can deploy my software. So as part of the EPMO, you can have reports that say, um, I have projects that are dependent on each other. Is the predecessor project late or has it slipped? And I want to know what projects are going to be impacted by this slippage. So in this case, I have hardware. If the hardware is not ready, I can't deploy my software. So I have a hard external dependency. They slip, I slip. A soft dependency would be a, they slip, 
as a project manager, I have the choice whether I want that to impact or maybe I can absorb that information. So I have a software plan, software being built, soft production environment being built. If everything's good and ready to go, I can then deploy this to production. Because we are a platform, when I want to deploy something to production, that's generally going to invoke a change request. So I can link my project task to a change request. And again, I can find, get reports on slippages, impacted number of change requests, et cetera, and track and report all of this information within a single environment. And this is this agile work could be done within ServiceNow because we do have an agile environment. This work could be done in Jira. It could be done in Azure DevOps. You may have two different teams working on it, one working in Azure, one working in um, Jira. We can handle that. So you can have a single console and view on what's going on within here. Kind of continuing an earlier resource theme. I can look at, I can allocate users and groups. I can get here a warning that says, hey, you receive fewer hours than you requested. So for instance, I want needed 40 hours, I only got 35. I can look at planned, confirmed, and actuals on time reporting. Early on, we didn't report as much time as we did, but later on, we started consuming all those resources. What is the availability of Troy? Troy, we're trying to kill Troy here. Troy's a little bit overworked. Or our program managers, how busy are they? We can also handle like teams. So this is my agile delivery team. I can allocate and book time for an agile team. So that when I, you may have agile teams that are pure, purely working on scrums, backlogs, et cetera. They aren't ever available for project work, but you may have uh, agile teams that are available for both their, let's call it their day job, as well as project work. So you can request and get and book Agile teams. So we can, here I've requested and I've gotten a certain percentage of the Agile team and they are working on and delivering on the stories that will ultimately be the software that gets delivered by this. You have the full financials, which again, at the top level, you have the financial reporting and the roll up. I can see all my costs, CapEx, OpEx, maybe some AWS cloud testing that the dev team is using down here. So you have full financial picture from cost to benefits within here. And then this is where I generate those status reports that you got a glimpse into in a couple different areas. So here I can see, here's my current project status report. Okay, we, we need new scopes, see how this has changed over the course of time, milestones, pending, risks, issues, decisions, completed decisions, et cetera. So building one of these things out quite often in other systems is very time consuming. Here I can just say, I wanna create a new one. What is my overall status, red, yellow, and green? What is the executive summary, which shows up here? Comments, why we're yellow? last week's activities or achievements key planned. And then why are is my schedule green, yellow, red, and my cost, what's the color of that and why? So this is very easy to generate. And then it's visible in a number of areas within the system. It's visible up in the context of scenario planning, investment portal, um, and other types of reports. So being able to have visibility into your hybrid projects, your waterfall projects, your agile projects in a common system and have that data roll up into the platforms is critical to for the EPMO to make the decisions on what is working right, what is not, where do we need to invest, retract, add people to, or when things change, what can we put on hold? And what critical resources can we move into other projects to, so we can deliver on the strategies and goals that are of value to our organization? So that's it for what I have for here, Jeremy. 
Yeah. Hey, thanks, Steve. One thing that, uh, you know, we often hear uh, as we go through this is can those projects be templatized uh, areas of that approach? We work closely with our uh, customer engagement team here, and I know that they're on the line as well, but, you know, oftentimes it could be uh, a community connect or Epic community connect, something of that nature where you're onboarding um, new engagement levels, right? So you have to execute on that work, but it also has to tie into other areas as Steve was mentioning. And so, Sometimes new things happen. As an example, I'm, I'm, this is again near and dear to my heart um, because vaccine distribution locations where sometimes they are not occurring inside of the actual uh, health uh, provider organizations themselves, the hospitals or any of the clinics, they're happening offsite. Um, some facilities are being leased so that those can be executed on. So that is a project template, so to say. You don't know what's going on, but you can, you can straw man up a template and then you start to refine it. That template worked last time, let's do it again. Um, we have seen this uh, occur uh, a number of times across our customers with things like Epic Upgrade process, reducing Epic Upgrades from weeks to days. So you can actually orchestrate the workflow of all of the teams across the enterprise that have some direct impact and the customer internally who and the patient downstream who has the impact of that upgrade process becomes really critical. That's the impactful work that manages it across all projects, tying back up to the greater strategy and vision view. And great questions during the chat on levels of detail. And please, by all measure, uh, you'll have our information and contact detail uh, as soon as we're done here with this webinar in a few minutes. And you can come back to us with additional questions. A couple of things that I, I just want to close up with here today, and I'll make sure I share the, the slide contents with you as well, is that the constant investments that the organization makes, first and foremost, um, we listen to our customers. We care about our customers. There are a number of them that are on what is called a product advisory council. They are also design partners. So what you see here are customers who have come from other solutions. They have been there before and the folks building the product have lived in those organizations, building it around the platform to help align to <clears throat> the proper direction as to where if we talk about shifting quickly to innovate, that's what we're having our customers help us do as well. And it goes into store releases and products. We released the scenario planning in August. It's already on its second release now with more detail on resource views. Um, hybrid portfolio management is a, a construct coming up in our up and coming release. Strategic planning, top down, bottoms up. Um, enterprise wide planning, better you, uh, user experience as well. Constant increase in better user experience across the board. It's not that it's poor now, it's, it always can be better. Um, and then simple planning for casual users. These are some of the areas that we're continually investing in inside of the business management enterprise strategic portfolio management suite of products um, that we're going to be focused on. And one that's actually really exciting that actually came up uh, pretty quick. And what it is, is it's roadmap planning. So I want to be able to look at all of the things, all of my initiatives from a top down, but I want to align the work and the strategies to better outcomes. So a different way of looking at customer success, improving productivity, improving user experience, all of those types of things to communicate and plan with the organization. To me, that's critical for an enterprise portfolio management office, enterprise project management office, to actually look at the full roadmap of the product-based outcomes that support continuous planning and cross-functional plans that are communicated across different business units, different parts of the organization to all align and be, so to say, um, oars in the, all in the canoe, rowing in the same direction at the right spot really digitally transforming because of the interactions that you have. And then in that roadmap planning, you know, communicate that high level plan. You're able to look at future versions, you know, that are coming up with investment funding, deeper dives that we have investments on with capacity planning, deeper work on the scenario planning, that true what if. Um, very difficult to do what ifs today. I lived in a world 15 years ago where what ifs still occur. And I have seen them today, even with some of the largest organizations out there, they still do what ifing in Excel. And they still feel like other types of solutions like that can do a what if. If they're aligned to a strategy and a goal and a workflow that's automated, that strategic alignment is easily visible inside of a platform that allows you to plan at a high level, execute at, a, uh, execute at the execution level, and also everybody be focused on the right initiatives at the right moment. Now, we have covered a lot of ground today, and I want to give five minutes left here. We'll keep the chat open, um, and that's some roadmap items. Uh, that we wanted to share with you all. But 
Steve had created this slide and I've shared this and it will, I'm happy to share it out again. I share it with customers quite often is that where do we get started or here's where we are in our journey. And knowing that ServiceNow with our success advocates and with the uh, link that I had shared in the chat window, our customers even put up some of their own use cases. They speak at Knowledge20, they're on the advisory council. But we have consolidated into getting started with ITBM. Again, this is an enterprise strategy perspective. The product is called IT Business Management. Um, this is a consolidated list of the resources that we keep up to date. Um, it talks about uh, not only the best implementation partners that are very good, specifically not in, in just in healthcare, but also we have access to a number of them that are out there. That's in bullet number two in purple. Um, the Now Create program that has free online training like PPM Fundamentals. And these links take you directly to those three to four minute training areas where you can actually get certified. You can watch these short little um, presentations and walk through step by step. Everything that Steve did today is accomplished based on industry best practices that are consolidated in helping build champions, helping build good, strong, solid, strong customers, and then also leveraging all of the resources that our customers have at their fingertips. And oftentimes those resources are those other customers that do post in those community areas um, to, to help them in that journey. So I truly hope that this was a valuable webinar session for everyone who attended today. Uh, we can either, if you raise your hand and you have additional questions, please feel free to do so or pop them in the chat and we will answer them um, as, as needs be. And Steve, thank you so much for a great little back and forth demonstration today. Uh, fantastic job as always, I appreciate you. Thank you. Again, please raise your hand, ask some questions. We're here to answer them. And I would be remiss while everybody's thinking about raising their hand or anything else to um, to go where I began at the beginning of this call and wish everyone a very happy holiday and uh, in the spirit of it all, um, I did wear this all for you today. It was a challenge to know if I should have done it, but I'm glad I did um, because I kind of kept me a little bit warm throughout the presentation and the webinar. So hopefully you got a, a good chuckle and you had a little bit of fun with us here this afternoon. So feel free to top some stuff in the chat and uh, really appreciate your, your time and attendance here today, everyone. And for those of you still on that want to look at the uh, the video session link that I was describing earlier, I will be more than happy. I'm just going to bring this up really quick to share with you kind of what all is in there. Um, if this is still being recorded, it's great. This is a uh, we have often been referred to. You know, we have the community site that is done with um, uh, the community where folks can go in like a forum and share. But this is the YouTube community site, <clears throat> and I have filtered and searched on IT business management here. And you will see that there is demand and uh, application portfolio management. We'll start to dive into uh, technical talks around things that are in our Paris review, which is uh, today with the current release. Um, we'll talk about previous releases like Orlando. It also will talk about resource management webinars that have gone on. Uh, we talked about resources today. Um, I, using the IT business management to adapt planning to embrace uncertainty. I think that was a common theme that we talked about today outcomes to create value. So there is a tremendous amount of content that gets uploaded in here. And some of it is four or five minutes. And some of it are sessions about as long as the one that we had here today. So again, that link is in the chat. And we're happy to share that with you outside of this as well, if you would like to see it.
And I think we're good for time. So thank you, uh, ServiceNow folks that have helped coordinate and do this and uh, looking forward to hearing from all of you again in the future. We'll say goodbye for now and happy holidays.